It's always wonderful to follow Colette. I see Ray's been here. <laughs> his 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 notes are here. <laughs> he follows me wherever I go. <laughs> God love him. All right. Well, welcome to each of you, and thank you all for having me back again. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here with you. And today I'll be talking about awakening to our everlasting life. So when we declare our wholeness and trust in the universal good and we awaken to all the blessings that are within us and allow them to express in the outer that Christ's self is alive. And that is the journey that most of us are always seeking. We're seeking the truth. Most of us that are in this room are seekers, and we've been seeking something our entire life, and that something is within us. It is us. Just as the mustard seed, that small seed, one small seed can be planted and nurtured and grows into a bountiful bush. We all start from a small cell. And with nourishment and love, we too grow into an everlasting life filled with blessings, filled with love. And that's really what we're here all to do, is to be that love and let our lights shine, that wisdom that we are. We all come with special gifts. And so working on enhancing those gifts and letting them move forward, to move us forward, to propel ourselves, and to bless those that are around us. And when we do that, we bless ourselves because we allow that God mind in us to unfold to the highest potential. And if you look just at our bodies, our physical bodies, since we start from this cell, we have the capabilities to reproduce every cell in our body in perfection. We have the ability to reproduce our liver and to regrow it. That's scientific fact. We also have the ability to rebuild any branches in our brain. So our physical body is forever rebuilding and renewing itself without us even thinking about it. That's pretty amazing to know that this physical form is continuously moving forward without any work from me at all. Recently, I saw on um, 60 Minutes, I think, about a guy in Argentina who is using stem cell research to reproduce his favorite polo pony so that he can continue to win in the polo competitions. So far, he has replicated 12 horses. They all have the same name as the original horse, but he does call them number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, all the way up to 12. Now, what he's found in doing this and doing the same trainings with these different horses out of the same cells as the horse that has passed away, 
is that they all have the same capabilities as the star horse. They can all win the competitions just as well as the original. Now, what he's noticed is that the environment can and has affected some of the horses. So, the exact environment that the original was produced in is not the same for the rest of the 12 horses. And so, therefore, they've all created a different personal identity. So they're individual, even though they're exact replicas in the DNA. And you guys are probably thinking, gosh, now where she's going with this one. But, but really, it, it stands the truth for us, right? There, we're no different. We all came from the same cells originated in the universe. And we all have a different identity. Everyone in here came from the same exact space in time, the same cells, and we've replicated into different personalities, right? Okay, so then what keeps us from that everlasting life, from living it? It's our thinking. That's what stops us. That's what keeps us from creating the magnificence that we were born to create. We're still in that season of Lent, and, and Jesus was our way shower, and he helped perfect that human transition into eternal life. He showed us the way. And we get stopped in our thinking with our beliefs and our fears. How many people in here are afraid to die? Right. Um, you know, I'm not ready to go yet, but I think that I'd be okay if it happens today. I probably wouldn't like it. I might go out screaming and yelling, but if that's the will, then we'll, you know, we're going to do it. That's one of the things that stops us, is that we believe that we're going to die. Even though this physical body reproduces itself continuously all through our lifespan, our belief keeps us from living on past a certain age. We all think that we're going to die physically, and therefore we do physically. That spirit part of us, which is detached from the personality, lives on. And some believe, as I do, that, that spirit is reincarnated into a new body. Until we get to the point that we no longer need the body. And when our thinking surpasses our fear of letting go of our personalities, um, I like my personality. It's a little quirky sometimes. Um, people don't always understand me, but that's okay. I am who I am, and I'm comfortable with who I am. And so I'm not really ready to let it go all the time. But because of that, it keeps me attached. It keeps me in fear. And it keeps me in this physical place. Also, the fear of leaving our loved ones. So, through death, 
we know, we believe we're going to die, and so we know that we're going to leave our loved ones and they're going to be okay. But if we go for eternal life, then we make a choice to leave our loved ones. Reincarnation keeps us in the cycle, and we grow, and we learn. With every rebirth, we move forward in life towards eternal life. Just as Jesus did. As we come through this Easter season, The ascension is the eternal life. He chose to lay down the physical body, but he did not die. He lived on and continues to live on universally through each of us, but through himself, through the actions and creation that he manifested on this planet. He declared that he was one with the divine mind. The Father and I are one. That's eternal life. Divine mind is a vibrant energy that exist in each and every one of us. That vibrancy allows us life. And when we connect to that divine mind, that super consciousness, as if you want to look at it from the scientific point of point, it's that super consciousness, that divine mind that's in every one of us, and we connect to it, and we're allowed to live everlasting life. Taking action around those things that's stopping us. So taking action around our fears, knowing what we're afraid of, Meeting it head on and allowing it to dissipate with the vibrant energy that is alive in each of us is doable. It's asking for the guidance in prayer. Aligning with that divine presence through meditation and then taking the action that we receive and bringing it into the daily presence, allowing ourselves to be whatever it is that you're here to be, individually and collectively. It's allowing us to grow as that mustard seed and to blossom and bloom and replicate is everlasting life. There's no separation in superconscious, that divine mind. We are all connected. We can all heal ourselves. We can all help each other to heal. There's a vibrant force in the universe. And it's using that vibrant force for the good and moving forward for good in the universe and moving beyond our own selves, our own personal identity to be in the world and do good in the world. And you guys are doing that. 
because we're doing it right here, right now, by allowing this community to continue to offer a sanctuary, to offer people a place to come to, to connect with that peace that's inside, to connect with that divine mind, to be vibrantly alive, to be active right here, right now, as your advisory board, as ushers, as musicians, as leaders, whatever your role is, here is good because you're bringing good not only to yourselves individually but you're bringing good universally and that's what it's really about that's the everlasting life that's living eternally just as jesus did allowing that to be who you are and then allowing it to radiate outward that's what life really is about. Allowing that vibrant energy that's alive to flow, to heal yourself, to let go of your fears, to lay down your personality and live from that divine presence. It's not easy because sometimes it's hard to connect with that divine presence. It's a practice. But our way shower showed us the way. He lives eternally through each of us. He showed us that being versus reacting is the way to live our lives, to live in peace. That knowing the truth is living as love and being the love that you already are. Recognizing it, being open to it, and using it for the good. And then mastering the truth. It sounds daunting, but it's really not. Mastering the truth is living life knowing and being and moving forward in all that you are. There's an affirmation from the Golden Key by Emmett Fox. And this lays on my, home, my desk at home. And it says, There is no power but God. I am the child of God. Filled and surrounded by perfect peace of God. God is love. God is guiding me now. God is with me now. And that's true for each and every one of us. There is no power but God. And we are that power. We get to be that power and live our lives with love and peace in all that we do and all that we are. And that's pretty magnificent. So whenever you're in doubt, whenever the fear rises, whenever the worry comes, because from our personalities, that's going to happen until we master it. Go to God. Ask for guidance. Align with that divine presence and take action with that guidance that you're given. Awaken to that everlasting life that you are. I love you. I bless you.
I behold the living Christ in each of you. Namaste.